Stop buying products that tank in price that end up losing you a lot of money. And so the key to avoiding products like these and instead buying products that end up being profitable is mastering Keepa. So Keepa is gonna be the most important tool in your arsenal as an Amazon seller. I don't care if you're doing retail arbitrage, if you're doing online arbitrage, or if you're doing wholesale, mastering Keepa is going to be one of the keys to success. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the top three metrics that you need to pay attention to when it comes to the Keepa graph and how you can use those to make better data-driven decisions. So we're gonna jump into my screen here in a second and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. But before I do that, take a quick second, subscribe to my channel below. I come out with three videos like this every single week and they're gonna help you become a better Amazon seller, specifically a better Amazon wholesale seller. So let's jump right into my screen here and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first metric that I want you guys to pay attention to here is going to be the average buy box price. Now, I use a tool here called ASIN Zen. This is separate from Keepa. You can actually find the average buy box price using a tool like this or a tool like SellerAmp, but Keepa will give you that information as well. So if we scroll down here and look at the Keepa graph, so it's pretty obvious that there's going to be an average price here that is pretty much the same, but for the sake of the example, we want to make sure that we're gonna be profitable at the average buy box price as opposed to at the current buy box price. So let's actually look at a different example because the pricing has been pretty much consistent here the whole year. So let's look at this product here. Um, so if we come over here to the data tab, again, we can see the pricing is relatively steady here across at least the last three months or so. But if we come to the data tab, and we look over here at the buy box statistics. So it's going to tell us the current buy box price is 997. The 90 day average is 1134 and the 180 day average is a little lower than the 90 day average at about 1084. So if I'm sourcing this product and I'm considering selling on this listing, the first thing I'm going to want to pay attention to is that average price. Like I said, and I want to make sure that I can be profitable at the average buy box price as opposed to the current buy box price. Because in reality, the current buy box price is just a snapshot in time. It can change at a moment's notice, and it's going to be a much more reliable indicator of profitability if you're able to be profit, if you're, able, if you're profitable at, let's say, the 90-day average price, right? So if I'm doing my analysis on this listing here, instead of using 997 as my, uh, as my expected sell price, I'm probably going to use something more along the lines of the 90-day average price, which, like we said, is 1134. And so that'd be the price that I would use here in my analysis, okay? Because right now it's a little lower than the average. It might stay a little lower than the average or it might jump back up to that average. Either way, I wanna make sure I'm choosing the lower of the two numbers, uh, which in this case actually would be the current buy box price. Okay, so the second metric that I want you guys to pay attention to is the offer count. So if we come down here and look at the Keepa on this, the reason I chose this product as an example is because it's seasonal. And the offer count increases drastically going into the season, right? So this is something that, uh, this is a really important concept because it's supply and demand, right? So if we look at the Keepa graph here, this third graph right here is essentially the supply. So it's the number of sellers on the listing. And then as the supply increases, right, we're going from 11 sellers to 12 to 19 to 25, the buy box price is coming down with it. They're directly correlated. As the, new, as the offer count increases, the buy box price will decrease. Like I said, simple supply and demand. So one of the most important things to pay attention to when you're sourcing is if you see that new offer count here, if you see that number skyrocketing or even just increasing at a decent rate, you can be pretty much guaranteed that the buy box price is gonna come down as a result. So if you have a pretty thin margin on that product and the amount of competition is increasing, by the time you get your inventory to FBA, it will more than likely not be profitable. So the new offer count is something that I pay attention to very closely. If everything looks good on the listing, but the new offer count is increasing steadily, I will avoid that listing because like I said, I know the price is going to tank. All right. So the third thing uh, and final thing for the sake of this video that I want you guys to pay attention to when using Keepa to source products is going to be the buy box percentage. So we're going to go back to this other listing and it's a better example of what we're talking about here. So in this case, we see that the listing has been at 1999 pretty much the entire year, right? Which tells me that there's a map policy in place. Minimum advertised pricing policy is what that means. It basically means that you're not allowed to price under a certain price point, which in this case is 1999, right? It's pretty obvious that that's the case here. 
So when there is a map policy in place, and a lot of brands will have a map policy because they don't want sellers undercutting each other and selling their product for a ridiculously low price, so they'll institute a map policy. Now, a lot of sellers have issues where they're not getting buy box share when they're jumping on listings with map policies because maybe the other sellers on the listing are a lot bigger than them, so they're gonna get priority in the buy box, and it's just hard to compete when one or two sellers dominate the buy box. <clears throat> so to verify how much the buy box is actually rotating, what you wanna do is come down here to the Keep It Graph and you wanna click on the Data tab here. And then you wanna click on Buy Box Statistics. So that's gonna tell you the rough percentage of who has the buy box for what amount of time over a certain time period. So what this tells me right here is, so really quickly, uh, if we look at the normal Keep It Graph, we see there's an average of <clears throat> let's say eight to nine sellers on this listing at any given time. Now, if we go back to the data tab and look at the buy box statistics, so of the eight to nine sellers on this listing on average, it looks to me like two sellers are getting over, so total 82% of the buy box is between two sellers, right? This guy, the Berkey guy is getting 55% of the buy box in the last 30 days. And then Safe Castle is getting 27% of the buy box over the last 30 days. And then nobody else is even getting 10%, right? This guy, he has the third most buy box percentage and he's at 8%. So that's a big red flag because that tells me this one guy is dominating the buy box over 50% of the time, right? One other guy is getting it about a quarter of the time and then everybody else is having to split the remaining, uh, looks like 18%, which is not very much. So if we look at this over the last 90 days, <clears throat> it's even more, it's even more so, right? This guy's dominating it almost 60% of the time, another guy about 30% of the time, and that leaves everybody else to fight over, you know, 9% of the buy box. If we look at 180 days, similar, uh, one other seller has about 10%, but again, bottom line is this particular listing is getting dominated by two sellers, uh, and we actually have access to this brand. We can buy this product. It's very profitable. If we were to sell this product, we would be, I believe our cost here is something like $5. So uh, we'd be more than doubling our money on every sale. It's a great product. They're not allowing any new sellers, so the competition is low. But the reason we don't sell this product, the reason we're not on this listing, is because, like I said, there are two people dominating the buy box. So even though our margin is fantastic, we're not going to make many sales because we're not going to get rotated into the buy box. And buy box share, like I said, is critical when you're evaluating listings where either there's a map policy in place or if Amazon is on the listing, you also want to check the buy box statistics to see if Amazon shares the buy box or if they hog it all for themselves. Okay, so that is pretty much the three primary keep it tips that I can give you in a nutshell. I hope this video is helpful. This is the, these are the three things I pay attention to primarily every time I'm sourcing. So if this video is helpful, leave a comment below, let me know. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And then be sure to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Corey Ganim. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be out with another video like this very soon.